All right, so the purpose of this video isn't to like call out anybody, make anybody feel, you know, like guilty or anything like that. It's really just kind of like a complimentary video to the next video I'm going to be releasing that I've been working on now for probably on and off over a week, which is an anti-piracy video and more specifically what's been going on in that scene. So when doing research for it, I came across these numbers and they are completely staggering. Like I had some numbers in mind, but what they actually are is nothing even remotely close to what I was thinking. And it made me understand why they're doing the things they are doing a little bit better. So when we cover that video, you'll be able to see, you know, over the past few years, the things that they are doing that are like more aggressive, outside of the box thinking type stuff, things that are more unusual and in some cases even extreme to try and combat piracy. This will give you a better idea of that. And that's the purpose of this video. But the numbers really are staggering. So let's go ahead and let's jump into it. And let's start off with Netflix, a study that was done by CordCutting.com, which was published here in February of last year, stated that they had reported that Netflix could be losing as much as around one hundred and ninety two million dollars per month, not per year, per month from piracy. It states that as many as around one out of every five people who use Netflix are mooching off of someone else's account, which of course you're not supposed to do. And it's costing Netflix around 2.1 to 2.2 billion dollars per year. Now, the stuff that I'm covering here, I, I can't go over everything in detail because of course we'll be here all day. I will link all of the stuff that I'm showing you down in the description, but that's just Netflix. We're not even talking about Hulu or any of the other streaming service. That's just so you get a general idea. 2.1, 2.2 billion dollars a year. And that is nothing compared to some of the other totals we are about to see. So for music next, there's this report that came out here in 2020 by the Recording Industry Association of America, and it states here that the U.S. economy loses over 12 billion dollars in total output annually as a consequence of music theft. They also show you here what that equates to to jobs loss in the U.S. economy. Now, I was trying to figure out if there was like, you know, a number globally for piracy regarding music, but I really couldn't find one. However, in 2018, IFPI.org did come out with these stats and they noted that globally around 38 percent of consumers still obtained their music through copyright infringement. So that means piracy. So what I'm going to do is since it cost the U.S. over 12 billion per year, I'm assuming that it would be that at least same amount for the whole rest of the world. So let's call it globally around twenty five billion dollars, although I think that number is very conservative. And next up is software and the Business Software Alliance did some research and they showed that around 42 percent of all the software that's installed globally is not properly licensed, meaning it's pirated. And that resulted in over sixty three billion dollars of revenue that was lost. And that's just for that particular year that they did the research for. So when they mean, you know, installed software, that, of course, means smart devices and computers, whether it's for personal use work, it doesn't matter. Sixty three billion bucks. Now, in all honesty, I really thought that this number, this 42% would be more like 10 or 20 at most. But the fact that almost half of all software that's installed on the planet is pirated, it just, I can't even wrap my mind around that. That's just way more than I possibly imagined it would be. And next up, we are going to hit the TV and film industry, which, of course, is another huge one. This one done by Digital TV, a report that was released in late October of 2017, where they did some pretty good research 
on how much it will cost the TV and film industry per year due to piracy. And they break everything down here. They list some of the most quote unquote offensive countries here, uh, according to some reports that they were able to get at least up to that point to 2017. And what they projected is that by the year 2022, about $52 billion per year will be lost to piracy uh, for the TV and film industry globally. So you see, this report came out on October 2017th, but this report here put out by the Chamber of Commerce's Global Innovation Policy Center, which came out in June of 2019, shows that the United States film and TV industry alone are losing 29 to as much as $71 billion per year because of piracy. And this is just the US-based film and TV industry. That $29 billion per year is a minimum amount, and the max, of course, being almost $71 billion. So that doesn't include what the film and TV industry of other countries are losing. Countries like Australia, Japan, Korea, the various countries in Europe, uh, Canada, and so on and so on. This is not taking any of those other countries into account, just what US-based film and TV industry is losing globally. So that's significant because here in this estimate of 52 billion by 2022, they estimated that the US was gonna lose maybe around $12 billion. This minimum amount in the newer report is $17 billion more than that. And that's just the minimum amount, meaning that this number here is right now 69 to $70 billion, not 52. And that's why I put it above software. And it could be as high as almost $110 billion just because of the piracy that the US film and TV industry are experiencing if it's closer to this max number. Again, it would be closer to 110 billion. So I'm putting it at around 60 to 70 billion right now because that's where it stands. So yeah, it could be a lot more than that when other countries give more updated numbers and reports and things like that. It could be even way more than 110 billion, maybe 120, 130, even 150, who knows? But as of right now, it's around 70 billion. And lastly, and you knew this was coming, the video game industry. Now, according to this article at CNBC that came out in 2016, approximately $74 billion were lost and almost 2.5 billion pirated games were downloaded just for the year 2014 alone for that one year. Now this covers the gaming industry as a whole. This means mobile games, console games, and PC games globally. And we know that of course this number for 2019 obviously has gone up. I mean, if we go back to this report that I found, and I'll link it in the description, that came out back in February of 1999, it says that for the year of 1998, over three billion dollars were lost worldwide uh, in the gaming industry due to piracy. So 16 years later, it went from 3.2 billion, more or less, to around 74 billion. That's a huge jump. A lot of things, of course, contributed to that. So we know that for the year 2019, five years after this report came out, this number obviously went up, not just because these piracy numbers, again, naturally tend to go up, but there are several things that can contribute to that. Countries that didn't have internet before now have it. Those that maybe had slower internet have gotten faster internet. There's also things that are not equated here. For example, in 2018, we saw a public hack be released for the PS4, which at that time made tens of millions of units potentially hackable. Same thing for the Switch. In that year, almost 20 million units were vulnerable to the new exploit that was found. And even though it was patched shortly thereafter, there's some mod chips 
that seem to be right around the corner from being released, which could make over 50 million units of regular switches and switch lights combined that are out there all completely hackable. And then we had the Checkmate and Check Rain jailbreaks for Apple devices, which made potentially hundreds of millions of devices be jailbreakable. And those are just some examples. So when we try to come up with a figure for 2019, I think it's very safe to assume that it has jumped from 74 billion to at least 80 billion. And again, I think that is a very, very conservative number based on the history and the track record. It really should be more than that, maybe 90 billion, 100 billion, maybe even a little bit more over the past five years. But 80 billion is definitely a minimum safe number to use because it has to be at least that. And now if we go ahead and add up these totals from the four industries, and by the way, the Netflix total that I did earlier, that is part of TV and film, all four of these combined add up to being almost $240 billion per year, 238 to be exact. By 2022, that number should definitely be somewhere in the $250 billion to around $300 billion range and possibly even more. And maybe it's somewhere in that range right now. Remember, we were using numbers that are more on the lower end. That means that by 2022, for sure, these industries combined will be losing around $500 billion every two years and every four years that comes out to being around a trillion bucks. And that's assuming that it stays at 250 billion and it doesn't go up during those four years, which we know it will. And one of the things that has been repeated over and over again through the years and even decades, and I have to admit that I've said it myself multiple times, is that piracy reflects just a small amount, a fraction of what these companies and industries are making. Literally only pennies to the dollar, if that are being lost due to piracy. Maybe two or three cents, a nickel, somewhere around there out of every dollar is what the companies are losing. It's such an insignificant amount that they really shouldn't care. But it turns out that's not the case. So if you come here to this report by Superdata, which just came out this month, it shows that for the year 2019, the video game industry earned about $120 billion for that year. That is for mobile, PC, and console gaming combined, which includes video game purchases and uh, microtransactions and all of that stuff. But remember, we said and we estimated on the low side that for 2019, at least around $80 billion were lost in the video game industry due to piracy. So if all those pirateers out there would have purchased what they pirated, that means that the industry, instead of earning $120 billion, they would have earned an extra 80, so they would have earned around 200 billion. Now, 80 billion is 40% of 200 billion, which means that out of every dollar from that potential 200 billion, what the industry ended up losing was 40%, which equals 40 cents to the dollar. That's what they lost potentially. Of course, this is assuming that everyone would have purchased what they pirated, which of course we can argue or debate that not everybody would have. But even if we cut that amount in half to 20 cents per dollar, that is still significantly high. Imagine if your paycheck was cut by 20% or your rent went up by 20% or your car payment went up by 20%. That's a significant number. It's definitely not just a few cents or a couple of cents to the dollar or even less than that, like a fraction of a penny, which some people think it is. You can see it's absolutely much higher. And lastly, guys, before we wrap things up, in the upcoming anti-piracy video that I'm going to do, I'm going to be covering some of the sums of money that are being lost indirectly due to piracy. Here in this video, we've covered the direct amounts that these industries are losing because of piracy. But in that video, we're going to take a look at one of the major financial losses 
to the local and global economies, and that's jobs. There are hundreds of thousands of jobs that are lost, and this leads, according to some reports, to around a trillion dollars per year being lost globally. This is a trillion dollars that local governments can't tax and a trillion dollars worth of pay that's not being spent on a local level or global level or whatever. So we'll cover that more in that video. And that is gonna do it for this video, guys. Again, this was just some FYI, and hopefully it'll give you a better understanding for that next video when I release it as to why the whole anti-piracy scene, especially over the last few years, has been expanding, why they've become much more aggressive, why they've done things that are out of the norm and in some cases even extreme, and some of the things that they are proposing that are even more extreme still, we'll go over that in that video. You know I appreciate you watching, and if you found anything here informative, useful, entertaining, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation to the channel, the best way to do any of that stuff is just to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everyone. Be careful, be safe, have fun, and we will see you on the next one.